This is code.org. Let's take a look at what we have here. So we are making a library and one of the key parts, obviously I already have mine laid out, is the activity planning guide. It will help a lot. And so I wanted to walk through some suggestions on how you can tackle this. All right, project, make a library. Libraries let you build functions that you and others can use to help build more powerful apps in lots of situations. Definitely, programmers use libraries all the time. Why rebuild something that's already out there? For instance, there's a lot of libraries that have to do with uh, Twitter and retweeting and automatically outputting information, things like that. There's libraries for everything, YouTube for, for everything, in particular um, tasks. As the designer of a library, you not only need to know how to program, you also need to make many different kinds of programs other people might build. For this project, you design and build a library of functions around any topic you want. You'll have an opportunity to exchange feedback with another group about how you might use the library to design an app. Finally, you answer a few questions about the library you design. You will submit this and uh, the actual library. Library requirements must contain two or more functions. At least one function must include a loop, an if statement, one or more parameters, that's the things in the parentheses, and a return. All right, so let's get going here. Your library can be about any topic, and they have a bunch of suggestions here. I should point out that uh, maximum and minimum, right? So you would just find the maximum value in a list. You'd use a for loop for those. Average, you want to use a for loop because you would add everything up in a variable and then divide it by the number. Uh, count how many times a given value. All of these are going to involve for loops. And that's obvious because you must go through each item in the data to get this information. Uh, sort, return the list in sorted order, that can definitely be tricky. So let's see what we're actually adding to this. Oh, and they even gave us an example. That's great. After you've brainstormed the focus of your app, fill in the table below with a list of functions you intend to build. Okay, so when they say parameter, by the way, this word list, that's a parameter, right? Well, it's actually an argument. But a parameter is anything like here. This is the parameter. When I use it, when I call get name, then whatever I call it with, maybe I say get name three, right? So I do a function call like we've done. And I don't want to leave this here, but maybe I say get name. And then I want to add a parameter or an argument, actually. Three. This is an argument. Here, when we make it, it's a parameter. So what would happen this? Well, the get name function is going to run. Index is equal to three. And so what eventually happens is var name is going to be equal to the name list and whatever items that index three. Okay, that being said, let's take a look. So I can go ahead and add that get name function. So get name and you likely have different functions, right? So and I'm going to use the parameter index parameter. So notice I have just did yep this one one or more parameters you have to have so i'm going to like bold that so i can mark it as yep got it all right and then let's see what this does oh it also returns so take a list and returns the largest value i'll say takes an index right so a number is going to be passed to it and returns and an index is the part the number it is in the list if it's the first item it's index zero if it's the second item it's index for one i know the counting's weird uh takes an index and returns the name value from the list all right and now this next thing is all about the actual parameter so for me i would put uh list list i guess that's the name of it yep and then the type of value it is the index will be an integer, but I could just put number probably. And then I'm going to describe it uh, number or maybe location of list item. And then what's being returned. So return for this, I'm returning a string, right? Name is equal to whatever's in my name index. And I know my name list is going to be a, uh, a list that contains a string. So because a string is a word and names are words so return string uh the item's name okay loop if statement parameter return so 
yes, my function has a parameter and a return statement. All right, so now we have part of those. And keep in mind, I still need to use a loop and I still need to use a uh, if statement, which I certainly will in other functions. If I scroll down here, well, here I'm using both at the same time, right? All calories check. And yours will be different. This is a good model though for when you are wanting to loop through data, depending on what you're looking for. I'm allowing my user to guess right now on an item and then loop through and look if see if they found any items with that exact amount of calories they guess on the calories so regardless all calories check and i'm gonna go ahead and put it here they say you only need two functions but if you notice i had a lot and that's because you probably will need more all calories check and then my variable was guess Oh, of course, that's going to all calories check go over a bit. It's going to drive me nuts. There we go. And so what does this do? This uh, takes a user entered guess and checks if item in list matches calories. I'm shorthanding this. It matches the calorie value. So they're trying to enter the list. Notice I'm doing slash slash, by the way. That's because these will be comments literally in the program. Index. Um, oh, does this take a parameter? Yes, it takes guess. So I'm going to do guess. And guess will be a number. And what is that? That will be user uh, calorie guess. And then finally, what does it return, if anything? Oh, this does return. It returns a count. And so that will be the integer, right? So, or a number. And notice right here, because you use it here as well. And that's why if it's really nice if well, while you're doing this, if you're doing it digitally to have these lines in front of it, because you could essentially copy and paste. So what gets returned? Well, I will say guess, not guess, count, count. And that is a number. And that is going to be the location of, oh no, that won't be the location. That's going to be the amount of items that have that many calories. Okay, and now I can say yes. Yes, this function uses a, a loop if statement parameter and a return. So that uses all of them. Okay, and this is what you're doing. Make sure to do these details now because it's super handy to have again when you actually have to fill in this type of stuff. And you definitely are probably going to have more than one uh, function to uh, full, fully utilize this application. So let me just take a look. This is my example. Yours is obviously going to be different because you have your own library. Make something more excited than my calorie guessing one. But hopefully you get the idea of how you can analyze your functions. Laying it out like this will help a lot. Okay, make sure. Yep, yep. And oh, this is the review. So cool. Good luck laying out your application. Make sure to use this while you're building it. Onward.